That was then. And this is now. The future of mass transit is here. This is a whole new technology for Denver. These are the commuter rail cars that will soon travel the East Line from Union Station downtown through Aurora to the airport. The East Rail Line, which will be known as the A-Line when we open up for service in the spring, is a commuter rail vehicle. So it's much different than light rail. It's still electrically powered, so you're gonna see the overhead power lines. However, these vehicles are much larger than light rail. They go at faster speeds. We also are able to run side-by-side -side freight railroad trains. For safety reasons, the Federal Railroad Administration has asked that all commuter corridors that run next to freight have commuter rail cars. At top speed, commuter rail can travel 79 miles per hour compared to 55 miles per hour for light rail. Testing and commissioning of the A-Line is already underway and will take about a year. Why is it a whole year to test a new train line when some of our light rail projects have had a much shorter testing period? We have brand new vehicles. Also, we have a whole new set of operators that will be coming on board. We also are a federal railroad. We have oversight from the Federal Railroad Administration on our entire line, and so there's a lot of additional uh, testing procedures that have to go on. Right now, the cars are only being tested from 40th and Airport Station out to DIA. They'll be tested along the entire corridor in the coming months. It's part of what's called the burn-in process, which includes a thousand miles of testing per car before the line can be open to the public. The testing also includes training the new operators both in the classroom and behind the wheel, making sure the communication system works and that all the signals and crossing gates are good to go. You will notice very soon that our commuter rail trains will be running along our East Rail Line corridor. It runs parallel to Smith Road and 40th Avenue, so you will start to see those trains going through. We just ask for your patience. We know that sometimes those grade crossings might be closed down for those testing uh, procedures, but it's really important from a safety standpoint. The final testing will take place about a month before the opening to make sure the trains are running on schedule. And while you may hear the train's horns during the testing, you won't hear them once they open to the public. The entire A-line is going to be a quiet zone, which means through intersections, trains will not be blowing their horns. Not only do RTD's commuter rail trains have to stop blowing their horns, but that same regulation is required for the freight trains as well. So it's even more important for people within their own vehicles and pedestrians to look both ways before you cross any sort of track. Testing is also taking place at what RTD calls CRMF. We're standing right now in the commuter rail maintenance facility. It's a 230,000 square foot facility. We have 66 commuter rail cars coming in by the end of this year. They'll all be serviced here, inspected here. Our operators will train here. Our mechanics are also housed here, as well as our operation control center and our security center. Inside, the trains are spacious. Each commuter rail train car that you'll see along the A-Line has 91 seats. And we'll be running in a two train car system. It's two train cars permanently coupled together. So each of those cars has 91 seats. At max capacity, there's a potential for each train car to hold about 200 people. The trains also feature level boarding, so they're very accessible. There will be eight stations along the East Line as it travels from Union Station to DIA, including two in Aurora, at Gateway Park, which is at 40th Avenue and Airport Boulevard, and at Peoria Station at Peoria and Smith. What's great about this station is its connectivity to the I-225 Aurora Line, which is opening up later on in 2016. RTD estimates it will take just 20 minutes to get to DIA from Peoria Station, and you'll also be able to get to downtown in a very short amount of time. Buses will also be available at the station, and when it's finished, it will have more than 500 parking spaces. RTD says the idea is to get you anywhere you need to go quickly and efficiently. The A-Line is not just our airport line, although we're very excited to serve our airport passengers internationally and nationally. This line will service a lot of other neighborhoods, such as Park Hill, Morris Heights, 
Green Valley Ranch for them to easily connect to work or other recreation activities. We're really excited to add transit options to neighborhoods around the Denver metro area, including Aurora. It's an exciting time for the history of transportation throughout the metro area, but especially here in Aurora. For Aurora News Weekly, I'm Yasmeen Marino. Hello everyone, I'm Lane Lyon. And I'm Wendy Brockman. Thanks for joining us. Are you ready? You can ride the University of Colorado A-Line in two months. Commuter Rail is brand new to us and Aurora TV producer Yasmin Marino says hang on because there's going to be a learning curve. It's big. It's fast. And very powerful. So pay attention. Safety in general is our number one priority. We really want everybody who's going to ride our systems to understand the difference between commuter rail and light rail. And there are definitely some differences, not just in the way the trains look and how fast they go, but also when it comes to safety. That train that just went behind me, as you can tell by my hair flipping up in my vest, uh, it's going pretty fast. Another reason to be sure that you are looking both ways, obeying our safety signage, pay attention when you're around any train track. This train is going pretty fast too. The top allowable speed is 79 miles per hour. Compare that to light rail where the maximum speed is 55 miles per hour. You'll see this sign at all of the commuter rail crossings. This is where you want to stop when the gates are coming down and the warning lights are flashing. Behind this white line. It's a safe distance away from the train and the tracks. Don't get used to the horn honking though. Operators are using them now during the testing phase, but after the line officially opens, the crossings will become a quiet zone for both commuter rail and freight trains. That means you'll only hear the horn if there's an emergency. The warning lights and sounds at the crossing gates will always be there to help keep you safe whether you're in your car or walking. We're here at the Smith Road and Chambers intersection in Aurora. This is where one of our crossings is located along the University of Colorado A-Line. You'll notice that they look a lot different than our light rail crossing. Commuter rail crossings have what we call pedestrian amenities, and that includes gates like this one here. The gates are pretty self-explanatory. If it's safe to go, just pull open the door and walk across, always making sure to be on the lookout for any trains. And what if one approaches while you're in the crossing? You'll notice that there's a large concrete area in between the commuter rail tracks and the freight tracks, and that's what we call a refuge area. That's a safe place for pedestrians and bicyclists to stand and wait for either train to pass. It's not just when we're in our cars or walking that we'll notice the safety differences with commuter rail. It will also be a new experience for passengers. At this platform, you'll notice that our commuter rail tracks are actually sunken down and that allows for level boarding. The commuter rail vehicle is much larger in order to allow for passengers to easily get on and off the train. That's why the track is sunken in. The future Peoria station in Aurora is a great place to see the differences in the track side by side. It's where the Aurora or R line will meet up with the A line. The light rail tracks are almost level with the boarding area while there's a four foot drop between the platform and the A-line tracks, which is why you want to pay attention to this bumpy yellow line. Not only is that important for our visually impaired passengers to know where the edge of the platform is, but it's also an important visual reminder for everyone. While there are a lot of safety differences between commuter rail and light rail, there is one way where there are a lot of light. They're both powered by overhead electrical lines, and even though the commuter rail uses much more power, the wires are live with electricity on both, and getting too close to either can kill you. Whether it's commuter rail or light rail, RTD has a simple but very important message. Passengers need to look up, watch, listen, look both ways, just be very aware. It's good advice for all of us. For War News Weekly, I'm Yasmeen Marino. 
And it won't be long before that's a regular sight I around know it. here. Yeah, well, RTD is also working with schools so kids can understand train safety. Some technology will help too. The trains have something called positive train control. So if they're going too fast or if there's another train on the tracks, it warns the operator. And if they don't respond within eight seconds, the train automatically slows down. Pretty stops. high tech stuff yeah. for sure. And RTD is one of the first in the country to have that system. Remember, opening day is April 22nd. Wow. Well, the final part of the project opens in April with the arrival of RTD's University of Colorado A-Line. The electric commuter rail will make two stops in Aurora as it travels between the airport and Union Station. So RTD wants to make sure that all of us stay safe around the tracks, especially the kiddos. Here's Aurora TV producer Christina Savon. Train tracks are for trains, not for kids. And that was the message students at Parkland Elementary School walked away with after learning about the new A-Line coming to Aurora. How many of you guys have noticed the construction that's been going around in the area? I'm just here to give you guys some safety information about when they get those train tracks ready to go. This is one visit of about 30 that we're doing to schools within a half a mile of our new University of Colorado A-Line. <laughs> which is a new commuter rail train that's coming. And we're going school to school to provide safety education to all of the students so that they can be safe around the train tracks, especially with, at this particular location, having light rail and commuter rail all coming into a very close knit area. There hasn't been any video taken of the new A-Line running at its top speed just yet. But you can imagine when it's traveling at 79 miles per hour, it'll be a game changer for both passengers and student safety. These communities within Aurora and Denver where we're reaching out to, they're used to having freight rail in their communities, so they're used to having those larger trains coming through. Um, but they're not as frequent as our commuter rail trains. Uh, those trains will be coming um, through each intersection at about every seven and a half minutes for most of the day, including the morning and afternoon rush hours when students and parents are um, making their way to school and work. Don't take shortcuts that cross train tracks. That's why it's important to RTD that students understand. If you see a train track and those things like coming, I'll move both ways. Stay with the grown up because it might be going super fast. So always hold your parents' hands. And just in case you forgot. Tracks are for trains, not for kids. For Aurora News Weekly, I'm Christina Savon. It sounds like cute. they're all paying attention too, which is great. You know what? Even 20 miles an hour is dangerous for kids. We're talking I mean, almost 80 miles an hour yeah. with that commute, and that's new for us in this area. It certainly so. is.